If you're new to this channel, you may consider subscribing and hit the bell icon so that you continue to receive the updates. Also, after watching this video, you may want to refer to some of the playlists that we have created for people who are interested in in-depth knowledge. These are the videos in the right sequence, which will give you thorough knowledge of the subject. Please share it with all others who might benefit. Let's get started. All right, so we are once again at the Google Collaboratory and we are talking about the same data set that we have discussed earlier at length. It's a call it survey data and we will have the same initial steps as we did in case of the k-means clustering and the other clustering techniques. So we begin by first importing the basic libraries. We read the data set. We inspect the head of the data. There were just two variables on a different scale and we had variables like college ID, which would be nominal variables will not participate in clustering, but will be used to identify the records. We check for duplicates with respect to the college ID. We check if all the other variables, rating variables are in the permissible range between one to five. We have done that. And then we move on to temporarily remove some of the variables like airport proximity and median salary and visualize the box plots. This triggers a call for treating the outliers for the placement column and we do that in the subsequent step. So all these steps have been discussed at length in the previous videos. I'm not going into too much of depth. If you have any doubt, you can refer to the complete data preparation video for clustering. But please note, because we said Gaussian mixture model is based on normal distribution or Gaussian distribution, it is going to be sensitive to the outliers. So we will have to treat the outliers. And it is also going to be sensitive to the scaling. So we'll have to perform a scaling for these models as well. So in this process of data preparation, we've checked for all the variables. They're free from outliers. We are checking for correlations and we don't find any significant correlation as such. All of this we've seen earlier as well. Then we are finally performing the min-max scalar, that to specifying a range for the features like airport proximity and median salary so that they're all in the range of one to five. Finally, we are checking the descriptive stats just to confirm that the variables are in the range of one to five. And we are concatenating these scaled features to the copied data frame. And then finally, here onwards, the Gaussian mixture model starts. So just like the other clustering techniques, we will begin by importing the Gaussian mixture class from the appropriate scikit-learn module, which is sklearn mixture. Then for Gaussian mixture models, once again, we have to mention the number of distributions that we want. Since we explain the theory using a one-dimensional example in two Gaussians, but for this data set, if you remember, we've always used three clusters. That's the number we are passing. And we are also mentioning a random state. Why this random state is important? Because in Gaussian mixture models, again, just like k-means, there is a random initialization of those Gaussian distributions. We are doing a fit predict on the scaled and treated data, data that's free from outliers and on the right scale. Once that is done, we can store the labels to the copy data frame and the actual data frame. Let's just check the head of the data frame. So we have the Gaussian mixture model labels by now. If you see the execution is pretty similar to the rest of the algorithms that we have seen. It's just the logic under the hood that helps us arrive at those cluster labels is very, very different. Similarly, we can check the head of the original data frame. Why are we plugging this to the original data frame as well? Because the original features will be a little more interpretable. And finally, we can check the value counts just to see the size of Gaussian clusters that we formed. So in cluster label one, we have 38 observations. Cluster label zero has 35 observations. And cluster label two has 27 observations. We are grouping by the cluster labels and trying to aggregate the features at the median level. This is how the outcome is. So once again, we can see in this case, let's say cluster label two seems to be lagging at most of the places in terms of the ratings by these students. It seems to have the highest median salary though. That's very surprising. But overall, it seems to be lagging everywhere else. Whereas cluster label one is a cluster that is somewhere in between, not as good as cluster label zero on most of the ratings, but somewhere in between and has the lowest median salary. Cluster label zero seems to be the cluster of best colleges here because they seem to be consistently pretty high on all the ratings. And even on the median salary, that's somewhere in between. Based on this profiling, we can always write our observations. So in our previous videos, we've always talked about the peculiarities associated with median salary variable. Please understand this will be only available for the people who got placements. It will not be there for people who have not even got placements. So it is quite possible that for cluster two, only a few people got placed and they got placed at a pretty high package. As a result, 
the median salary is high. Whereas it is highly likely that in case of cluster label zero, the median salary is 82, but most of them got placed. So we'll have to build some context around these before interpreting them. I hope this gives you clarity on how you go about applying the Gaussian mixture models. Thank you.